Welcome back to Impact with AI. I'm Brandon Andrews, excited to engage with another entrepreneur using artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to impact the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today, I'll be discussing SDG 9 with my friend, Teo Adesanya. Thank you so much for joining us today. To begin with, we'd love to hear about your business and how you're making an impact. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, Ty Adesanya here, CEO of Lola Vision Systems. Um, we're creating AI chips for uh, edge devices, um, particularly targeting mobility. So that includes electric vehicles, spacecrafts, aircrafts, drones, UAVs, uh, anything that needs to take in uh, an understanding of the spatial environment around surrounding the vehicle and process what's going on uh, on board or within the device itself. Um, so, you know, as far as how we're using AI, we're we're basically an AI hardware infrastructure, right? We are what allow the AI models to actually be running on device as opposed to being sent to a data center, processed in a cloud and then retrieved later. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we like to think of ourselves as being able to bring a lot of that AI computation closest to the edge, closest to the humans that are utilizing these products uh, out in the out in the ecosystem. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing what you've been working on. And I love what you said, bringing AI, bringing spatial computing to the edge, because, you know, we hear so much about the potential of these technologies, what they can do, what they will do, what they might do if they get enough funding, if there's enough power, et cetera, available. But for you to be able to say this is something that um, we built and that's being deployed right now, I think that's incredible. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, I'm really trying to make sure that what we're building is actually going to have an impact uh, in the world. Um, there's millions and millions of the devices that require this level of sophistication and intelligence. And um, it may not always be the case that you have a data center that you want to uh, have access to to pull information and retrieve that information uh, to make sense of it uh, later on. So, yeah, we think this is uh, the the future and the way in which uh, devices and vehicles and uh, and things that we interact with on a daily basis is going. So yeah, sure. as we think about uh, you know, smaller language models and localization, which is really the key to broader access and accessibility to these kinds of technology, um, we have to be able to to use it in ways that don't require huge server farms, that don't require um, even in some cases the huge data sets, but things that can be localized and, uh, and made really accessible uh, on um, a small device or on a home device. So love what you're building. And uh, I think there's a lot of positive potential there. Um, now let's talk a little bit about United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 9. SDG 9 is industry innovation and infrastructure, um, really focused on investing in infrastructure, whether that's transportation, irrigation, energy, information, even digital infrastructure and technology. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you think your business is impacting SDG 9 and uh, maybe uh, what needs to be done to achieve some of its targets. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, most of the time when people think about uh, infrastructure, they're thinking about roads and bridges uh, and public transportation. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that is a critical need. Um, we're also expanding that thought and, and ideal towards digital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, these electronics are going to need to be transformed to really um, improve the daily lives of the folks that are, are dependent upon these type of technologies. Uh, for instance, you know, instead of uh, a vehicle relying on, you know, some telemetry control from another source or waiting on retrieving information that's processed in the cloud, uh, we absolutely want to make sure that the infrastructure within a vehicle is a lot more safe and that mm -hmm. it can compute a lot of that uh, sensor data on board a lot faster and in a way that uh, improves the 
cybersecurity and safety metrics um, within these vehicles. So I think that's that's just one application. There's there's plenty of them that exist. Um, but you know, even in uh, different countries across Africa that uh, might be rural in nature, or um, you know, as we think about the landline transforming into the cell phone, like that kind of leapfrog in technology is, is something we can do with with the right kind of infrastructure if we are mm -hmm. mindful of how we create products um, with that intention in mind. Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to be intentional. So not just building technology because it's cool or, or, or to push a barrier or to push a boundary, but building technology that is intentionally crafted to improve access and to be sustainable. So not just giving people a big bang, a wow, a pop, a, a cool factor, but actually building something that's going to be a practical and, and sustainable solution. I think that's great. Now, SDG 9 is has had some significant progress. Um, there's millions of people around the world, hundreds of millions that are uh, connected in a better way now than they were uh, when the sustainable development goals were launched. Uh, but there's still work to do. What kind of resources are needed by uh, businesses, platforms like yours and or others to achieve the SDG 9 targets uh, by 2030? What do you need to support what you're doing? Yeah, we need some critical infrastructure that can support these needs. And it not only uh, is specific to internet access for all, which I think mm -hmm. uh, almost should be a human right at this point, uh, yeah. but we also need to think about the energy infrastructure to support that, right? Um, you know, how do we enable 24 seven access to uh, clean water and, and electricity, right? Mm -hmm. These systems, a lot of which you know are running a lot of uh, requiring a lot of power consumption, it, you know you almost need to make sure the demand is supported with uh, the right kind of uh, energy sources that can you know withstand what's necessary to to bring those to fruition. So you know that there's there's quite a few needs, but I think there's quite a few uh, areas of opportunity. You know anywhere mm -hmm. where we see that there's a gap. You know, that's an opportunity for any company to come in and provide some resources and technologies that can close that gap um, in the future. So, well, it looks like you've certainly identified a gap and identified an opportunity and are, and are working to fill it in. You're absolutely correct. We do need the uh, financial commitment from governments and others around the world to build infrastructure in a way uh, that uh, is going to make accessibility to many of these technology tools uh, much more significant than it is now if we want to see those really big network effects that uh, are really only possible when uh, much more significant parts of the world are are actually connected. So uh, SDG 9 is certainly uh, one of the goals that has made some significant progress, but lots of work to be done to be able to reach our goals by 2030. Um, now, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and I, I just have one thing. I think it also ties pretty well with uh, SDG 12 as well, you know, the uh -huh. response to consumption and production. So as, as we're thinking about critical infrastructure and innovation there, when we make the new infrastructure, we should be making it more sustainable so that mm -hmm. future generations can reap the benefits of how much more intentional we are about being responsible as engineers and as producers of a lot of these uh, technologies and, and just yeah. production uh, in general. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I definitely think um, if at this day and in this day and age, we're not being very intentional about how we create the products and, and making sure that they are sustainable, uh, then we're certainly not only doing ourselves a disservice, but doing a disservice to future generations who will have to inherit uh, the world that has been potentially negatively impacted by products or, or services or solutions that that weren't built with that intention. So that's a great point. And you know, part of the reason why the SDGs work is, the, is because they are interrelated and uh, you can be focused on one 
but of course have impacts on, on many others. So I appreciate you bringing up SDG 12 here as well. So I now need to ask you the big question. Knowing what you know about artificial intelligence and machine learning, do you think it can turbocharge sustainable development? Yes, yes. I mean, I think it's critical for it. I don't think you can be as optimized as possible without it. You know, mm -hmm. the way in which we learn about um, efficiencies and the way in which we're able to implement them, you know, I think is a, is a, is a, is a requirement at this point. Uh, for, for us at Lola Vision Systems, you know, the way in which we're applying AI uh, is it, really mainly around computer vision. Mm -hmm. But there are other areas as well. Um, you know, I don't need to, I mean, I may not want to get super technical, but when you think about how an AI algorithm or model is running an LLM um, on a GPU, that mm -hmm. is much more different in power consumption and sustainability perspective, from a sustainability perspective than if you are able to run something that's a lot more intentional for the algorithm or for the AI model on hardware that's dedicated to support it, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of where we're leaning on creating much more dedicated uh, hardware for that uh, particular type of requirement. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, the UN secretary has said that he believes artificial intelligence can turbocharge sustainable development and Part of the reason why I'm engaging in these conversations is to explore that statement, is to see can artificial intelligence actually accelerate not only some of the sustainable development goals uh, before 2030, the end of the goal period, but can it also more broadly uh, impact uh, some of the development work that's happening around the world? Uh, so thanks again for joining us today. Before we go, how can people connect with you and your business? How can they learn more, partner, and support what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Um, they can follow on LinkedIn. I'm pretty heavy uh, user uh, there. Um, just follow my name, Tayo Adesanya, or my company's name, Lola Vision Systems. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a website, lolavisionsystems.com. Um, we're usually pretty good with uh, social media, so you just try to find us on any of those platforms. but um we'll be you know I'm, I'm usually readily available uh if you want to reach me on instagram for instance it's mba just a ploy on uh my time as a short stint playing a little basketball and realizing that i wanted to go the route of uh um you know getting my mba and then launching a little deeper in the semiconductor industry myself so uh, but yeah follow me and uh and you know happy to chat and and give uh pointers or game on how we can, you know, try to achieve and accomplish what we all are, uh, you know, headed towards in terms of this innovation cycle. Well, great stuff, Ty. Thank you again for joining us today. And thanks to all of you for joining us for another episode of Impact with AI. If you'd like to see more of these conversations, visit impactwithai.media or subscribe to our playlist on YouTube. See you next time.